So today I'm going to tell you how to put a DSLR underwater, or that is put virtually any DSLR in an underwater camera housing so you can take pictures or video. And you're going to be able to do it instead of spending two or three thousand dollars for a professional one that's actually meant for your camera. Now the downside is you're not going to have access to all the buttons on your camera, autofocus or manual focus and a lot of the buttons that you're used to during normal shooting. Basically, how we do that is you buy a used housing on eBay or at a garage sale. This one's an Ike light. Um, it's got a dome port. This is probably from the 70s, this model, maybe the 80s, I'm thinking 70s, for an SLR housing. And you got to pick one based on the size of your camera, but a lot of these are really big, the ones that are made in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And this was 60 bucks on eBay used. So you put your camera inside here. I've put in a GH1, a GH2, and the Panasonic G7 in here, and you have to slightly modify the inside. And I'm gonna show you what I did and what you can do. Okay guys, so here's the inside of the SLR Icolite housing, um, just to give you an idea. This plate here I fabricated with some plexiglass and plexiglass is pretty easy to cut with a jigsaw and then there's a quarter 20 mounting screw I mean now the controls you can see here these knobs right here uh, you get a shaft collar this right here is a shaft collar and take a coat hanger and bend it to the angle you need this works the on and off switch on the Panasonic G7. Uh, it's worked other cameras of mine too. And so when you pull this forward, it moves the camera on and off. Now this knob here is the record on off function. So again, a shaft collar, coat hanger. Uh, I found this little rubber end piece I just stuck on. So when you go up down, that hits your record button. Uh, we got another knob over here, a lever, uh, that also functions as the taking photo button. So when you push it, it presses down the camera and takes the photo. So again, this worked for the GH1, GH2, and G7, but you can adapt it for any camera. Not every lens, although this does fit the 14-140, uh, the 14-2.5, what I'm filming with right now. Um, so it just depends on your camera. Will this fit a 5D? Uh, maybe with a short lens, it, it might, um, you know, if not, maybe like a 60 D or 70 D, but you just got to kind of guess when you're buying these and look at the specs. Sometimes there's measurements, sometimes there's not. So that's this particular model. I'll show you another one here. Now this SLR style works great for photography. It's small, you know, not too bulky. But for video, like the G7 or GH4, where the slightest touch creates a lot of camera shake, you might want to move to a bigger housing. Something like this one down here. Oh, this is a big Icolite housing, originally designed for a larger video camera in the 90s, maybe even the 80s, this one. I used to have a Sony VX2000 in this one, and I've had it like 10 years. And again, you can modify the insides to work some of the buttons. This thing is heavy. Uh, it's about 20 pounds, but when you put it underwater with a DSLR shooting video, it's a lot more stable because it's heavy. The handles go out longer, so you get less jitter in the filming underwater that you do. So let me show you inside how I modified some of these and how you can modify the inside. Okay guys, 
here's a different model, iClight, meant for the older video cameras with the port. Um, let's look inside. So again, you got lots of levers and knobs. This particular one, to work for a DSLR, I put an aluminum plate to raise it. Uh, you can drill holes to mount your camera. Um, there's different knobs on this one. This function, the record lever here to start recording. And this one back here, I believe, was the on off. So not as many functions on this one, but you can modify it to work for your proper situation. This particular one, the old Sony VX2000, you could actually focus it on the focus ring with this. And you can modify it uh, possibly for a DSLR with a follow focus to work, but that's probably gonna take a lot of work. So again, that's just showing you two models, how I've shot a lot of underwater video. The downside is you don't have manual focus for what I've done here, so you get that pulsing in and out focus. Those are just two options. That's how I've shot a lot of underwater video. If you tinker around with it enough, you might be able to get that to work. Again, this is like $60 on eBay. You might find it at a garage sale versus you know one to two to three thousand dollars per a professional one and a lot of the model cameras every year update so they don't work so when you buy one it doesn't work the next year if you want to upgrade your camera like the gh5 all the knobs are going to be different from what you previously did here's some underwater video what i've shot over the years with these housings and primarily just the panasonic uh, lumix cameras <laughs>